tutorial, I'd like to cover the control pin pipeline. Uh, the pipeline is designed to solve um, trading algorithms with the following structure. Uh, the first characteristic is that for each asset in a known set, you compute the n-scalar values for the asset based on a trailing window of data. An example of these could be moving average, could be standard deviation or the likes. Um, the second characteristics of um, of these kind of uh, trading algorithms that Pipeline is trying to solve is that you are trying to select a smaller tradable set of assets based on the values computed in part one. In part one, let's just say you calculate the standard deviations and you really want to focus on low volatility or low standard deviation stocks. You can um, using Pipeline to select those stocks that is below, let's just say 5% or 10% standard deviation, whatever that you determine that is uh, suitable for your algo. The third characteristic is that after you have done um, the step one and step two really is that you want to calculate the desired portfolio weights on the set of assets selected in two. And the fourth and last step really is that you place orders to move the algorithm's current portfolio locations to the desired weights computed in part three. Now, there are a few challenges in doing this without pipeline uh, and doing it robustly. And the first and foremost is that uh, you are working with a couple of thousands, if not tens of thousands of uh, assets or stocks uh, in our case. So you need to be able to efficiently query large sets of data. No, normally market data is what you will pull up, such as open, high, low, close, and the volume as well. Um, and nowadays, you need to pull out fundamental data, um, could be satellite data, could be other uh, alternative data sets that you want to actually pull up um, for your algorithm. And then after that, uh, after you query, after you actually downloaded or extracted the data from the database, you need to perform computations on these large sets of data or large sets of assets, I should say. After you've extracted these data from the database, the next thing that you really want to do is to perform computations on these large sets of assets. And ideally and hopefully, um, in the back end, you have an algorithm or the so-called corporate announcements such as stock splits, reverse splits, uh, dividends are all accounted for automatically, and also asset delisting as well, or mergers and acquisitions. Uh, these are all accounted for in the back end for you. Now, Pipeline really is designed to solve these problems by uh, providing a uniform API uh, for expressing computations on a diverse collections of assets. In a design workflow uh, of uh, algorithmic uh, trading, uh, the ideal process is that you start with the research phrase. Uh, in Quantopian, you will be using the research notebook or the Jupyter notebook, as it is known. And in the implementation phase, you will move to the IDE. Um, one of the features of the pipeline uh, API of Quantopian is that you can actually uh, do both of these uh, either in the research or IDE, and they're exactly the same. You don't actually have to change after moving from one environment to the other. Now, I guess the, there is actually some differences. However, that's really a how it is run at the back end, it's not something that you will have any visibility or it will affect you in any way at all. In Pipeline, uh, there are three types of computations that can be expressed. Uh, factors, filters, and classifiers. I'll go through them um, briefly now. Uh, in tutorial 3, 4, and 5, I will go into them in a little bit more uh, details. So. In a simplistic way to distinguish between the three of these is that factors um, value is in the form of numerical value or real numbers, whereas filters is in the form of Boolean, so it's either a yes or a no, and classifiers will be in the form of category output. So if I use student grades, for example, it would be A, B, C, D, F. Uh, so those are the category uh, output um, that we are referring to. Now, those category output could be in the form of string or integer. So let's uh, look at the definitions that's provided for here and the Quantopian tutorial website. So let's start with factors. 
the definitions here, factor is a function from an asset and a moment in time to a numerical value. So this is what I was referring to when I was talking about numerical value. Uh, a simple example of a factor is the most recent price and price, as you know, can come in, well, any form in the form of uh, decimals, really. Given a security in a specific point in time, the most recent price is really a number. Uh, another example is the 10 day uh, average trading volume of a security. Factors are most commonly used to assign values to securities that can be used in a number of ways. Uh, and the factors can be used in each of the following procedures. Uh, you can use it to compute target weights, uh, generate alpha signal, construction or constructing other more complex factors or constructing filters. Now, these are a little bit abstract right now as we go into the other tutorials uh, you will be able to actually get a, a better grasp of it uh, factor i guess uh, probably one of the easiest way if you're coming from a finance background is the pharma and french uh, beta uh, so that's the sensitivity of the assets to the so-called pharma and french uh, factor so the number could be any decimal place at all so basically it's a real number so it could be 1.2 could be 0 0.56 so anything of the likes um, so going to filter a filter is a function from an asset and then a moment in time to a boolean notice that the definitions is very specific it refers to assets it refers to a specific moment in time and in this case for filters it's a boolean it's either a yes or a no Okay, so an example of a filter is a function indicating whether the stock or the security price is below $10. Given a security and a point in time, this evaluates to either true or false. Filters are most commonly used for describing a set of assets to include or exclude for some particular purpose. Um, you know, one way to use it is whether the average trading volume is above or below a certain so-called benchmark or level that you like it to be if it's below you deem that is illiquid so you don't want to trade that stocks so in those situations what you will do is that you will filter out um, by using uh, these filters a classifier really is a function from an asset and a moment in time to a categorical output uh, more specifically a classifier produces a string or an integer that doesn't represent a numerical value Example, an integer label such as sector code classifiers are most commonly used for grouping assets for complex transformations on factors outputs. An example of a classifier is the exchange on which an asset is currently being traded. The other common um, usage of a classifier is to rank them, uh, rank stocks based on, let's just say, use the example of price to earnings ratio. Um, you know, so you can rank them into 10 categories uh, based on quantiles, uh, deciles, and basically classify them that way. You can also use pipeline to perform computations on different data sets. Uh, one of them being the market data, which is your typical open, high, low, close and volume, uh, fundamental data or partner data that um, Quantopian provides, such as sentiment, such as earnings calendar, and many, many others. Um, you can look that up under the Quantopian data. Um, we will go through these in the later lessons. Um, a typical pipeline usually involves multiple computations and data sets. And um, in the following tutorials, we will build up a pipeline that selects liquid assets with large changes between the 10 day and 30 day 